Pat Love back with, with Proverbs chapter 23, starting at verse 26 to 35. Now, all in between I'll probably be interjecting because this is very symbolic. This is what I would call a type of an allegory, a very symbolic. And I want to explain so you really get all the juices out of this rich scripture. It is a warning, a warning, a very scary warning. And the sad part is it describes just how unaware a person is that they are being destroyed. Listen to this. My son, starting at verse 26. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Now, who does that sound like? It sounds like the Lord talking. This is done in a father and son type dialogue. But this is God pleading with our hearts to draw near to him because therein lies our safety. Okay, listen to this. For a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman is a narrow pit. Now, we're not literally talking whore and we're not just talking symbolically. It has both meanings. So the double-edged sword is cutting both ways, literal and allegorical. You understand? So what you're seeing is, yeah, okay, uh, the, the subtlety of a woman like that is definitely a no-no. But, and it's also dangerous. But you're also dealing with the enticements of sin. And there are things that look good, taste good, feel good, smell good. Ooh, we doggy, mm 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 good, but it ain't. For a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman is a narrow pit. Now, I looked up those words. This is Pat Love and her two cents, in and out. A deep ditch is like dealing with the gutter. It brings your life down to the level of a gutter. Then the, the, the pit, a narrow pit. Have you ever seen a person try to climb up out of a narrow well? It is almost an impossible thing to do. There has to be help from the outside to get them up and out, or that is where they will make their grave. Where will you make your grave? All right. She also lieth in wait as for a prey and increases the transgressors among men. So, oh, she's recruiting, baby. She's recruiting all kind of dingbats that'll go her way. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has babblings? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness? of eyes. Now, I used to date a guy years ago when I was in my 20s. When he was sober, I'm making a point, when he was sober, he had the sweetest little smile. I always thought he looked like a little teddy bear. He had the cutest little eyes and a little glow in his eyes. But every weekend, he had this thing where he had to pile up on the Budweiser. He had to drink, 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 drink all day, all night. His face would get puffy. His eyes would be bloodshot and thick. His skin would look rubbery and red. And the good looks he had, they were gone. They were gone. He looked like he had soaked up too much moisture and, and he looked weird. Then his attitude, check it out. His attitude would change and he would start to get paranoid, suspicious, depressed, sorrowful, angry. Look at that question. Look at the question. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has babbling? Who has wounds without cause? Feelings getting hurt for what? Nobody's attacking you. You're afraid. You're nervous. Something's going down. You don't like. 
Ain't nothing going down. It's all in your mind, buddy. Who has redness of eyes? And this is the answer. They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. Now listen, that's literal and figurative. The literal part is people change when they get drunk. People change when they're under the influence. Their personalities change, their demeanor changes, their attitudes change. It's really a sorry thing to see. Even their looks change. And then you don't want to be around them because it's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Whoa, baby, you are tripping. Often nothing but some alcohol or whatever it is you're loaded on. Wow, listen to this. This is why sin is so dangerous. The ways of sin, the lures of sin. Because you can find yourself in situations where you're arguing with somebody and the argument gets so far out of hand like a runaway train, you forgot what started the argument in the first place. I literally saw a man get shot over a quarter because it wasn't his turn at the pool table. But he decided to act a butt. And as a result, he lost his life when he tried to start a fight over something as silly as a game. The whole thing. He, whether he was drunk or not, the, it's that whole mindset. You get caught up in this, this trick bag. And you literally dig your own grave for nothing. Verse 31. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup. You know how you hold a wine glass and you're like, Ooh, look how pretty. Ooh, I got to taste that wine. Well, guess what? That's exactly what sin does. It lures. It entices you. It intrigues you, like I said in the other video. Sex. Ooh, baby, what I could do with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you see something... And it's so fine. Ah! I mean, like, really? I could lay with that all night long. Give me two or three of them all at once. Hey. And you're getting yourself all worked up, all hot and bothered. Oh, 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 oh. I just got to have that. <laughs> oh, man. You don't even know what that is. You don't know if that has AIDS. You don't know if that is a serial killer. You don't know if that is an abuser. You don't know what that is. But you got to have it. Well, you got to have it. You got to have it now. Whew. And you work yourself up into a heated frenzy over that. <sighs> Listen, you guys, I'm telling you, this stuff is serious. It's dangerous. And you keep playing with it like a baby playing with a grenade, like I said before. Look not thou upon the wine when it, gives its, when it is red, when it gives its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright at the last. It bites like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Listen, I was watching this woman on Facebook. They showed a little film clip. She was enticed by the snake, pretty snake. It was laying on this man's shoulders. And she holds the snake by the head. And she reaches over and she pulls the snake near. She just had to do this. I don't know why. She kisses the snake and the snake bites her face. Well, guess what? That's what snakes do. So if you're silly enough, stupid enough to kiss a snake. And I'm sure some of you are laughing now because you're like, yeah, that is stupid. 
But what are you doing with your snakes? And your snakes will come in many sizes, shapes, and camouflages. It will come in many disguises. But you want to make love to the snake. <sighs> yeah, right. At the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thy heart shall utter perverse things. Oh, boy, you start to fantasize. Ooh. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea. Now, picture that. You're laying down in the middle of the ocean. Is that crazy or what? In the middle of the ocean where there are sharks, all kind of crazy critters out there that can eat you alive, whales, everything, octopus or octopi, and then you've got jellyfish, all kinds of things that could kill you, but you're laying in it. Think, I'm talking symbolic now. You're laying in the middle of the sea like you can control the ocean. Right. No, baby. You will be overcome quickly. You just don't see it coming yet because it looks fun and enticing. Here we go. Or you'll be as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. Imagine, I'm trying to think of what I can use. Imagine this pen and here's the boat. Okay. And there's the mast. That's what holds the sails. There are no sails on it. But you're laying down at the top of a mast and all you need is one good swish from a, a wave and boop, there you go. What that means is you're living your life on the edge. You're living your life in a very dangerous, precarious position. Some of you young ladies are are hooking up and making love and being slapped around and controlled by pimps. That's laying at the top of a mast. Some of you women are married to men who beat you because the sex is so, 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 so far. That's living in a precarious position. That's deadly. Some of you men are hooked up with women who are psycho. And boy, when they go off, you don't know what they're going to do or, or what craziness they're going to start. That's spooky, but you're in it because her bod is just, hey, you just can't cut that stuff loose. Some of you men are in love with gambling so much that gambling will bury you alive because you can't stop. You can't stop. You get a hold of it, and it's like getting hands full of boobs. You just can't let go. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, the thrill, the thrill. You just can't cut that thrill loose. So you lose your house. You lose your family. You lose everything because you, you just can't cut this feeling loose. You're lying at the top of a mast. And this is what you say. They have stricken me. Oh, look what's happened to me as a result of all of the stuff I've gotten caught up in. That's me adding Pat Love's two cents. And I was not sick. Huh. Denial. They have beaten me. I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. And I'm adding, and again, and again, and again, because I'm addicted, because I can't cut it loose, because it's got a hold on me. And boy, when it gets a hold on me, it feels so good. I can't let it go. But I know it's killing me, but I can't let it go. I know it's destroying my kids, but I can't let it go. I know it's ruining my life, but I can't let it go. Oh, I just can't let this thrill go. And then one day the thrill loses its taste. And now you can't let it go. And it tastes lousy. You can't let it go. 
and it's killing you, but you can't stop and you can't let it go. It's destroying you. It tastes nasty. It smells nasty. You're sick of it. You're sick of it. You're sick of it, but you can't let it go because you're out of control. It's in, it's in control of you. Now, it's telling you to bend over and kiss your butt goodbye. Because you can't let it go. It's got you. It's got you by the balls. It's got a grip on you. That's what you call a death grip of sin. You need to be delivered. You know the only way you can be delivered? Jesus Christ. Seek him while he may be found. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Seek him while he may be found. Do you hear me? Stop it now before it is eternally too late.